the mail has come in, the Save the Tardif mail. So we thought we'd uh, get in the guy who knows more about it than anybody, the producer, John Nathan Turner, the man responsible for the whole thing. Good morning. Good morning. And you brought some sacks with you as well. That's just uh, some of the protests there. How yeah. are you? I'm very well, thanks. Great. We're making a colourful pair this morning in our shirt. It's like summer. We've had stacks and stacks of, uh, of Save the Tardis mail. Some, some great, I'm sure you have into your office, things like, uh, like this one from Lee Hollands in Maidstone in Kent. And one here that opens up from uh, Sally Wilson and Joanne Webster. I mean, just representative of, of loads and loads of letters. We've had some, some anti ones as well. And uh, actually, one, one pro one that I liked was from a uh, lady called Beryl Freeman. It says, Great alarm has been sounded throughout the galaxy. Time Lords have thrown up their hands in horror. Even Captain Kirk and Mr. Mr. Spock are agape. Doctor Who cannot travel without the TARDIS. It must stay. After all, what's the police box for? Would Captain Kirk look good in Apollo? Ask Bradbury and all the other great writers. So we've had some of those and some, some great drawings as well. And someone even sent in a TARDIS police box. Have right. you seen one of these? A little yes, money box. Uh, Susan Stone from Prestwich. Thank you very much, Susan, for that. I'm going to hang on to that, put my money in it. So, I mean, all the hoop harm, is, is it getting worse and worse? Well, it is. I mean, we're being bombarded with petitions mm -hmm. and there's a couple of newspapers who are running campaigns. Um, it is something I want to make clear that, that we're just thinking about. We've not made any right. firm decision. Um, my main worry was that children were growing up not knowing what uh, the TARDIS was. I mean, what the police was, was right? Yes. They're now obsolete in, in England, and uh, I was very concerned that children should be educated to think that what we know mm. is a police box is uh, known by them as a TARDIS. It's just some kids actually think it's just a TARDIS, and that's it. That's that right. to them is the TARDIS. Why did uh, police boxes become obsolete? I think about three years ago yeah. in, in England. They still mm. exist in Scotland and I think Ireland as well. So basically, for, for people who've never seen a police box, they were special boxes that you could open up and get a, a direct line to the police That's as opposed right. to finding a call box. Right. However, what's astounded me is the mail I've had says, mm -hmm. uh, it's okay, our parents have explained exactly what it is, so right. don't worry about it. Right. We have, I mean, uh, apart from the, the, the pro stuff, a tiny bit of anti stuff, like, uh, you know, Carrie Jane uh, Stutcher, I think it is from Cheshire. I quite agree with the BBC for taking the TARDIS out of Doctor Who. The police box, which was the TARDIS, was disappearing when my daddy was my age. I think the reason they took it out was because many children don't know what a police box was, which uh, sort of says it all, really, I suppose. But the, the pros far outweigh the antis. I haven't had many antis. No, I'm right. Kidding. No, we've only, had, we've only had a few. Uh, so we'll keep the letters coming in, and we're going to be chatting to you more about it later. Okay. And you can call John on 01 811 ask him any questions about Doctor Who and the TARDIS you like. Sorry to lumber you with that one. And uh, you're going to come on the pop panel as well, aren't you? Sure. Display your pop knowledge. Uh, right, so you can... Hello, Doris. <laughs> He's over there with Mike in the office. Hello. Right. Thank you. I love the way they harmonised on the address there. That's terrific. We've got so many TARDIS calls, we've got to get straight into them. So if you call 01 811 you can speak to the producer, John Nathan Turner, on the telephone. And we have Michael Parrott first up. Michael, good morning. Morning. Where are you calling from? Um, Kirby Longsdale, the, uh, well, it's in Lancashire. In Lancashire. Right, you're through to John. Hello. Oh, hello. Um, I'd like to ask you, where, where did you get the TARDIS? Where did you get the idea for the TARDIS? Well, originally, Verity Lambert, the very first producer, uh, she decided that the uh, doctor's, uh, doctor's uh, TARDIS would look like a police box. And her original idea was that uh, every week it would change to blend in with the surroundings. However, they very rapidly ran out of money. And so at the end of the first story, the uh, doctor commented that uh, the TARDIS had got stuck as a police box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK, thank you. A sneaky way out of it. Thanks for your call. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Uh, right, Antonia Evans is on the line. Antonia, good morning. Good morning. Write your TARDIS question, please. Um, hello. Hello. Where did you get the name TARDIS from? Uh, well, I think it was made up by the uh, devisers of the series, who were Sidney Newman and Donald Wilson, and TARDIS stands for Time and Relative Dimensions in Space. Thank you. OK. Go and write that down if we forget it. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye, thanks for your call. And Andrew Gillardi, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Andrew, you're through to John Nathan Turner. Thank you. Hello, Andrew. Um, when you've been doing vocational filming, have you ever surprised or shocked anyone that was in the, um, vicinity with the monsters? Uh, well, I think uh, we obviously have frightened them with monsters, but uh, we almost caused a crash one day when we were filming on the A1, and we placed a police box in a lay-by, and uh, there was uh, Tom Baker's doctor coming out of the TARDIS, and uh, there was very nearly a, a very nasty crash. Oh. Thank you. Okay. 
Thanks. Bye. Do sometimes people think it's real when, when you're on location somewhere? Absolutely. Yeah, it must be quite frightening actually for them to suddenly come across. It's like if a, if a car chase is being filmed or something, you're not quite sure it's a film or real. Right? Once a policeman came along and uh, asked us to move along. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chaz Early, good morning. Good morning. Hello, Chaz, where are you calling from? I'm calling from West Wickham in Kent. From West Wickham, right. You're through to John Nathan Turner. Hello, John. Hi. Um, could I ask you, out of all the serials of Doctor Who that you've produced, um, which single one was your favourite? Um, I don't really have a favourite. If you if you forced me to name one that I particularly liked, it was a story called The Keeper of Trakan. Why was that? Well, I thought it looked absolutely beautiful. It was a, a stunningly visual and attractive story. Yeah, I enjoyed that one as well. Also, I think uh, the Doctor's, the new Doctor's first story, which is called The Twin Dilemma, starring Colin Baker, also looks uh, tremendously good. OK. OK, Can I ask you, just, just before you go, because that's all the calls you have time for at the moment, um, do you think that John looks like the producer of Doctor Who? I bet you thought of a man in a suit with short hair, didn't you? <laughs> no, because I recognised him by his Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I like it. OK. OK. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. People always think it's a BBC producer. He must be uh, wearing a suit and have short hair. Great. You brought a bargain along for us, haven't you? Yes, That's I have. Bargain. Quite a lot. There's a celebration book, 20 years of the programme. Right. My favourite LP. A picture of the Daleks. All right. TARDIS mug. Terrific. A pair of TARDIS gloves. TARDIS gloves? A Doctor Who hard. pen, limited edition. And a TARDIS tent. Oh, oh we had a TARDIS tent on last year. I mean, we're, That's we're, right. Yes, great. We're trying to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Those are lovely. Well, let's say it stays as a police box, otherwise that'll be a sort of collector's piece, I suppose. TARDIS gloves are lovely. And you have a question? Yes, the question is, which planet did the Doctor visit to repair his TARDIS? And a little clue, it was the fourth Doctor. OK, the fourth Doctor. Which planet did he repair to to repair his TARDIS? Uh, right, the answers as always, Saturday Superstore, BBC Television, London, W128QT, and all these Doctor Who and TARDIS goodies could be yours. Saturday Superstore, BBC Television, London, W128QT. Good luck with that one. And the question once more, just so they've got it. Which planet did the fourth Doctor visit to repair the TARDIS? Right, hope you got that. Uh, more from John later on the pop panel, and more from me.